morning everybody crafting journey here that journey chick on instagram welcome to another edition of crafting and crime daily and it's friday everybody out of your chair right friday dance oops friday dance yeah friday dance mm -mm -mm -mm. yeah that's all <laughs> I'll have you know, yesterday my Apple Watch said I did 10,000 steps. Now, before you say congratulations, let me just tell you that if you wear your Apple Watch while you're crocheting, it gives you extra steps. <laughs> yeah, so I didn't do 10,000 steps. I did 10,000 stitches, but I don't know. Probably not 10,000 stitches. This is a cowl. Look how gorgeous this is. I don't even remember what yarn I used, but it's so pretty. Yeah, I'm trying to think. I think it was some kind of lion brand Mandela. That's what it looks like, one of the Mandelas. Anyway, really pretty. And uh, since I have a black sweater on, I decided, hey, let's be colorful, shall we? Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. So today what you see in front of you is a puzzle board, yes. But before we get into that, I got an order from diamondpaintingdrills.com. The link to that retailer is down in the description. I am an affiliate for that company. If you follow that link and you make a purchase, I do get a small commission. So. She always sends an inventory sheet of everything she has in her inventory. This is all possible DMCs. Oh, she's got them on. Oh, it's two-sided now. Okay. So, and on the bottom, it'll give the date of the sheet. So, as of January 1st, this is what she has available. Well, this is everything. But if you look right beside the particular number that you're looking for she'll say whether she has it in round or square or both and then on the back what is the back um i don't know what this back means i'm gonna have to ask her hmm oh i get it i get it okay this is by color this is by number. So if you can't find your n the number by color, you can look at it uh, numerically and it'll tell you, for example, 995 is 6.19. So you go back to the front and you find column six and you go down 19 spaces and you'll find 995. Cool, I, I can figure these things out. This is really handy to have, okay. And this is my invoice. If I wanna check off everything. Okay. She's having a sale, buy three, get one free, which is why I placed this order. Well, I placed the order because I needed the drills for my, um, my, dragon painting, the dragon stores. So these are all colors that I'm gonna put into the dragon. Yes, she also sends a sticker, which I already gave to my sister, the sticker. But look at all these amazing colors, reds, purples, oranges. Uh, another orange, there's a lot of orange in the, in the dragon. Oh, this. This is a reddish, reddish purple, I think. Then another red and a pink, pink. 600, oh, 600 is probably my favorite. Yeah, and 823. You can never have enough 823. So that is what I ordered. These are all squares and I will keep the box because I can just store them right in the box. So that is my order. So for every three of these that you order, you can get one free. And there are about 2,000 drills in these packages. They're done by weight, but there's approximately 2,000 in these. Okay. 
that is that. So now I've got the puzzle board out because oh, you know, my sister and I've been doing puzzles in the dining room and I can't do them. I figured out I cannot sit at the dining room table. I just, my it kills my back. So I have this, I, I have this puzzle board. I've had this for years and it actually has these trays that um, slide in and out of the edges that you can take the tray out and then you can sort your puzzle with the trays. But we're using that in the dining room. So my sister's going to be starting a new puzzle. She just finished up one last night. I finished it for her. Standing up. <laughs> I'm standing up doing this puzzle. So this is the puzzle I'm going to do on this board. Now she's not too thrilled about this puzzle. So I just purchased this on Mercari. It is uh, designed by Josie Lewis. It's called Colorful Diamonds. How appropriate. Diamonds. We're going to open it. And I'm going to just keep it on this tray. That way I can lift the tray up, put it aside, and put my diamond painting back here when I'm working on the diamond painting. And yes, I consider puzzling a craft. I love it. I love it. And I like to listen to podcasts and trials while I'm puzzling. What are you doing, kitty kitty? Oh, you want to come see what's going on? What is going on, Mom? Hi. How are you? Hi. You want your little bed? No, you're just coming to say hello? Good morning. This is Stitch. He is about a year and a half old. Still a baby in my eyes. Yeah, still a baby. And if you don't know, he's one of the two cats, Stitch and Pearl, my other cat, that I got from Crafts with Crashly. Yeah. Okay, you're making, no, 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 we're not playing with the diamonds. Uh-uh, no. Okay, go. All right, I just want to see. So what I'm going to do today is like, while I'm talking to you guys, just kind of sort them out a little bit. I figured out, I think what I'm going to do is sort them by color family, like red, purple, blue, green, yellow, orange, and then just kind of make little piles of the colors. First, we'll just find the edge pieces though. I'm wondering if the edge pieces are all white. Oh, it looks like they are. Okay, well, that shouldn't be too difficult. Here's all the pieces. And it does, it does not look like, this is a buffalo puzzle. It doesn't look like they gave me a picture. Oh, oh, wait a minute, they did. Oh, yeah, you gotta dig down and find it. Here it is. I love when you get a picture of the puzzle. Here it is. Okay. That way I can use the box to sort. Oh my gosh. Oh, look how beautiful this puzzle is. Gorgeous, and then there's three more that you can order that are in along the same lines that beautiful gradient colors kind of like my cowl today gradients so i don't know that i need this right now but clearly the edges are all white so um so we're going to try to find edge pieces today while i talk to you about the trial i think i'll just put the edge pieces down on the board they're all going to be white, clearly. And when I'm doing a puzzle, um, I, all, I like to turn all the pieces over face up. But I may do that later since, you know, we're, we're chit-chatting and, you know, <laughs> I don't want to spend too much concentration time on the puzzle right now. But it's, it's we're not going to have a hard time finding the edge pieces because they're all white. Now, we might have a hard time putting them together since they're all white. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Oh, this is going to be challenging. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. Here's a green piece. Okay. Well, we're just going to toss the pieces in there if they're not edge pieces for now. And I'll, I'll turn them all over later when I sort them into color piles. I bought this on Mercari for $10. The woman had it listed for 13 I think, and I offered her 10 and she took it. Aren't I clever? Whenever you, you know, just note to self, whenever you're buying on eBay or Mercari, don't accept the price that it's listed at. If it's a buy it now thing, make the person an offer. They may take it. 
They may not. And they, you know, what do you got to lose? If you if they don't take it, you just buy it at regular price or whatever price they have listed or just go on to the next item. But always, because I am an eBay seller, so I'm, I'm speaking from personal knowledge, don't always accept the, uh, the price that it's listed at. Okay, I think these are all, there's an edge piece. Okay. So we we're talking about the trial of Mark Jensen, but before, but first, before we get to that, Monday, oh, two days from now, the trial starts of Alex Murdoch, Alex Murdoch trial out of South Carolina in front of Justice Clifton Newman. Now, interestingly enough, Judge Newman's son had a heart attack and passed away just three weeks ago, four weeks ago, not not long ago, um, but still going forward with the trial. So it's going to be an interesting trial. So interesting. So what I'm going to do is this weekend, I'm going to make a video, or maybe even today, I'm going to make the video of a uh, preview for that trial. So I can give you a little flavor of who this Alex Murdoch is. Um, yeah, because it, and why this case is so interesting. He's going to be tried on Monday for the death of his wife, Maggie, and his son, Paul. Paul was an adult. They were uh, out at their estate, the Moselle. This was like their hunting lodge. They had dog kennels out there, 1,700 acre property. Uh, the, yeah, they had, they had money, these people. Had is the um, operative word there. So uh, one night in 2021, I believe it was, yeah, 2021, uh, his wife and son are murdered. His wife was murdered with a rifle, son was murdered with a shotgun. But Alex is the one tr on trial for this case. I have always been of the belief that someone else helped him, but no one else is charged. This is not a case that's like the Idaho murders, where the police laid out in an affidavit everything, well, not everything, but they, they laid out the case against Brian Kohlberger pretty nicely, and, and enough to make us think, okay, we can relax. They've got the guy. Um, they've done some great police work and we can, you know, wait for the trial to see what else they have against him. But in this case of Alex Murdoch, we have no idea what the state has against him. No clue. None. They, all we know is that he's been arrested for the murder of his wife and son. Yep. Uh, there's been some speculation that there's an eyewitness. I don't know. We'll see. And one of the reasons they are saying that they uh, are, um, don't want to release information is because the two attorneys that are representing uh, Alex Murdoch are Cracker Jack. You know, Cracker Jack. They're, they are good old Southern, you know, top of the line attorneys from South Carolina. Part of the good old boy network that goes on in South Carolina. Um, yeah. <laughs> so... Interesting. So I'm going to have to make a white pile, too, because there's going to be lots of white in this puzzle. Now I know why my sister didn't want to do this puzzle. <laughs> it's not going to be easy. I know my friend Robin. Robin loves reading and all the things. She does lots and lots and lots of puzzles. And um, I don't know that she's done this one, but she's done some gradient puzzles. I'll have to ask her, you know, what, what her technique was in doing them. So... All right, now we can talk about the trial of Mark Jensen, the retrial of Mark Jensen. So yesterday was the cross-examination of Paul Ratzberger, the chief investigator. And apparently crime scene, <laughs> the CSI guy as well. I, don't, I guess in 98 they didn't have a crime scene team. I, I don't know. I mean, the paramedic was on call from his house, so maybe they didn't have a crime scene team. Weird, huh? Mm, good coffee. So I listened to this. It went on for hours, this cross-examination. And Paul, he did not waver. 
in his testimony. Uh, I mean, there was attempts to discredit some of the evidence he found. Well, did you collect this glass and send it to the lab? And yes, I did. And did you collect the, the macaroni and cheese that was at her bedside? Yes, I did. And he goes, well, I'd like to direct your attention to the statement that you gave and blah, 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 whatever date, where you said the macaroni and cheese had been eaten by mice, so it couldn't be tested. And he's like, no, I, that's true. I did say that. And that's that did happen. He said, but we'd already tested it and put, put it in the evidence room. Now, when somebody requested it for further testing, we discovered that we had a mouse problem in the evidence room and the macaroni and cheese was gone. <laughs> it had been eaten. They saved macaroni and cheese. How disgusting. If it was craft, it probably was still edible <laughs> years later. <laughs> I know. That's funny. Um, okay. So. So that's what I listen to for hours and hours. And I'm thinking, oh, do I, my ears are bleeding. Do I want to listen to any more? Well, the next guy on the stand was a forensic computer analyst. And I was just fascinated by this testimony. Fascinated. He took the home computer in the Jensen household, which we don't know how much Julie went on. It was in Mark's office. And... Um, I think this is primarily used by Mark. First of all, he was able to go through this computer, even if there had been temp even if there had been files that were deleted, he was able to pull up the deleted files to see where whoever it was had gone on this computer. So the attorney walked him through October of 1998, November of 1998, and December of 1998. You know, what did you find? First, she showed him a calendar for October of 98. And on this calendar, uh, they had listed the times that he, that someone had been on the computer. So they, they did one for October, one from November, and one for December. So most of the time that were that someone was on this computer would be late at night. It, it, somewhere between maybe 11.30 p.m. and 3 or 4 a.m. There was activity on this home computer. Every now and then there was activity maybe late afternoon, 5.30, 6 p.m. But that was a rarity. At this witness said that there was no activity on this computer during like regular business hours. Like when Mark would be at work and she would be home, Julie would be home. No computer activity. So Julie was not on this home computer. Now it's supposedly the defense is going to maintain that she used the Quicken program to keep their checkbook, basically, the household finances. Well, this witness said there was no household finances on this computer. There was a Quicken program, and when, and when you opened up the Quicken program, it was all a finances or, or financial activity related to somebody named Sorensen. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you a little peek of t today's testimony. I've already listened to the first witness, who's a co-worker of Mark Jensen, who did co co corrob corroborate that Sorensen was a client of Mark Jensen's. He was a dentist. So, so no home financial stuff on this home computer. And even in the Quicken program, no home financial stuff. So from that, we can glean that Julie was not the one using this computer. Unless she was up. And I don't know any mom of two little active boys, and one's a toddler, that's up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning, unless their child is up with them. And you're not sitting at the computer if your child has gotten you up at 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. You know, I could be wrong, but... I think it's a pretty safe bet. In any case, then, uh, you know, once we see, she first she showed the October calendar and then she went through some of the October searches. And oh, this stuff was fascinating. I was writing it all down. So one of the searches was uh, October 17th. Who attempted, um, oh, 
This was about a, a, an article about a man who had attempted to kill his wife by blowing her up with a pipe bomb. What? Yeah, that's what he was reading. Uh, then there was a search uh, about poisoning. Then there was a search about sabotage, sabotaging a pool using chemicals. Uh, then there was a search about nicotine, a search on October 19th, uh, this was at 2 o'clock in the morning, about pipe bombs, uh, another search about anarchists, another search about anarchist cookbook, and I don't mean food recipes, um, and then 3.14 a.m. on the October 19th, the anarchist search was continuing. Then the attorney put up the November calendar and showed all the activity. And then she, uh, they went through the searches that had been done in November. And some of the searches, the first search was suicide. Next search was toxicology. And then within that search was toxic alcohol or toxic alcohols. And then within that search, you know how you, you know, when you go down those rabbit holes and you click something and something looks interesting in that article, and then you click it and then something looks interesting. And then you, and next thing you know, you're at some completely different place than where you started. He ends up on ethylene glycol. Mm -hmm. How interesting. Then another search on carbon monoxide poisoning. Then a search of the National Toxicology Program. Then we go into December. Now, December of 1998, on December 2nd and December 3rd, there were searches. Now, we know that Julie, on December 2nd, was pretty sick. Her son had called the woman that uh, they had an arrangement with where he would go to her house every other Wednesday and he called that woman because it was her turn to have her son come to the Jensen home. He called her and said, look, mom's really sick. Can I come to your home instead? That was all on Wednesday the 2nd. On Thursday the 3rd, Julie passes away in the afternoon. The the paramedics don't get there. They're called at 4.30 and they arrive three minutes after they're called and she's dead and has been dead for a period of time. So what are the computer searches on December 2nd and 3rd? The first, even before I get there, this analyst commented that someone had attempted to delete all of the files from December 2nd and December 3rd. I mean, they were deleted. So whoever did these searches deleted them. They didn't want anybody to find them. Well, he was able to find them. Just know, please, people, that <laughs> when something's deleted, it's not deleted. It can always be found. Uh, yes, there, there are ways <laughs> that these computer guys, they are so good. They can find this stuff. So if you're going to kill somebody, don't go through searches on your computer. <laughs> yeah find someone else's computer to do it on. Okay, so the internet activity at 4.34 a.m. on December 2nd. First one was Paxil. It was uh, from the, uh, it was an article that came out of a Mosby. Mosby's are, are like, they make medical textbooks. And this was um, basically a pharmaceutical information about the drug Paxil. What are the dosages, common dosages? What are the ingredients? What are the interactions? What are the side effects? You know, those are, you know, a whole thing like that. So that was one place that was searched. Then at 8.16 a.m., you know, while his son is making phone calls to the neighbor to see if he can go over there after school, um, someone is on the computer searching Ethylene glycol poisoning. Now, what are the chances that the son is on the phone calling the neighbor um, and mom is on the computer searching ethylene glycol poisoning? I, I, I just, I don't get it. I don't think so. I th I'm pretty sure. Uh, if I was a juror, I'd say, you know, 100% that's Mark. It's Mark. 
searching ethylene glycol poisoning. <laughs> then at 8.17, he searches what is foam, fomepezole. At, it's F-O-M-E-P-I-Z-O-L-E. -E. Well, apparently that is approved for use after ethylene glycol poisoning. It's a treatment that you give after someone has ingested ethylene glycol. Then another search was how patients with toxic alcohol ingestion typically present. Um, and within this article, it said that ethylene glycol usually manifests itself between four and six hours after ingestion. So what about like slow amounts over time? That's what I would be curious about. I don't know. Then another site was producing acidosis and optic nerve damage. Uh, apparently that's one of the side effects of ethylene glycol poisoning. Then he pulled up an article called ethylene glycol. And in that, it describes three stages that you will go through once you've ingested the ethylene glycol. The first stage is you, you suffer from depression. Um, vomiting, drowsiness, uh, coma, respiratory distress, convulsions, followed by central, uh, followed by cardiopulmonary issues like, you know, lack of pulse, um, rapid heart rate, then lack of pulse, and later on, renal damage. At 8.36 a.m. on that December 2nd, he's going to another poisoning website, and also within that site, they talk about ethylene glycol. And he clicks on that, it describes it as a sweet tasting compound, then at 11.45 a.m., uh, he goes to the site called Anatomy Atom. Apparently, this is a site where you can put in different sy symptoms. And I mean, they ask you the series of questions and then it'll come up with, you know, here's what you're suffering from, uh, I guess. And Within that, it had a list of poisons, and the user accessed the ethylene glycol within that list of poisons. And some of the symptoms it described were no urine output, blood in the urine, weakness, fatigue, convulsions, rapid breathing, blue lips and fingernails, nausea and vomiting, rapid heart rate, low blood pressure, headache, stupor, unconsciousness or altered consciousness. Then at 9.34 p.m., let me see, was that a p.m. on the other one? No, 11.45 a.m., okay. 9.34 p.m. was the search for antifreeze poison. Now, within all these ethylene glycol searches, it says, where is this compound found in antifreeze? So another list of causes um, that will be suffered by the user of ethylene glycol would be um, apnea, which means, you know, you stop breathing. Rapid breathing, skin discoloration, blood pressure low, um, and it would resemble you having consumed alcohol. You would look, you would appear inebriated and... Someone that talked to her, talked to Julie within that time frame, had said that she sounded like she was drunk. December 3rd at 12.46 a.m. This is just after midnight on the day of Julie's death. Someone is searching antifreeze poisoning. Oh, I am going to have fun with all these white pieces. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> They search toxicological emergencies. Then there's a series of, can't read my own writing. 
symptoms, which include unconsciousness, decreased consciousness, and decreased alertness. Um, at 1.03 a.m., he's searching, uh, someone is searching ethylene glycol poisoning. 1.08 a.m., they're searching, um, they get an index of diseases. And they pull up this index of diseases. You know, it's just this long list of diseases alphabetically. And they pull up the H section and look up hypertension. After that, they pull up the T section and they look at tachycardia, which is, you know, the rapid heart rate. Then at 1.17 a.m., they pull up the C section and they look up cardiogenic shock. Which says the person would have a weak or absence pulse. Then at 9.40 a.m., now this is supposedly Mark was seen at 9.25-ish a.m. that morning taking the boys to school. We know he didn't go to work, so it's likely that he came back home. So at 9.40 a.m., there's a search of ethylene glycol poisoning. And 9.41, a search of diabetic ketoacidosis which is also known as DKA. That's what happens with diabetics, that they have too much sugar. And uh, yeah, it's very, very dangerous. So that's where that testimony ended. And at this point, the judge said, it's getting late. <laughs> um, the, cr the cross examination will be tomorrow. So at this, when I turned it on this morning, they were not doing the cross-examination. I'm like, well, what's going on? So apparently what happened was um, the prosecu prosecution has like 75 witnesses on their uh, witness list. They said, you know, we want to take these people out of order because they traveled to get here. So they, by agreement they, with the defense, they agreed to put, postpone the cross-examination of this forensic computer analyst till after these people that have traveled from out of town testify. And the first one is that coworker that uh, I mentioned earlier. And she has some interesting things to say, which I will go over with you on Monday. Now, yes, Monday is the Murdoch trial, but Monday, keep in mind, they got to pick a jury first and which may or may not be televised. And if it is, it's boring. It's not, you don't, you don't want to see it seriously. Um, so we're not going to tune into the Murdoch trial until they're ready to actually start opening statements of the case. So we'll still be covering the, the Jensen trial. I'll probably do the Murdoch trial in a separate video. Um, so, cause it gets too confusing to do more than one trial in, in the same video. You're like, ah, oh, what is she, you know, what, <laughs> which trial is this? I get it. I get it. Yeah. Honest to God, people, I have everything. <laughs> Some of the white has a little bit of color in it. Like there's a dab of pink in this one. A teeny, you can't see it. Anyway, <laughs> so I'm just going to have to kind of go by the shape of things. Putting these pieces in here. It's going to be fun. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is my weekend of 24 hours of cross stitch. Yeah, I will put this aside. I'll just pick it all up, put it aside, and I will have my cross stitch out. And what that 24 hours of cross stitch means is that from this afternoon until Sunday afternoon, which is 48 hours, within that 48 hours, I have to spend 24 of it cross stitching or as much as I can. Now, the last time I attempted it, I was at 14 hours. So my goal is to break my record of 14 hours. I don't know that I'll, you know, cause I like to nap and sleep and play Minecraft, you know, so <laughs> I don't know that there'll be a lot of Minecraft playing cause I, I, I really want to participate in this event. It's, it's once a month and, um, you know, then I get to hang out with my cross stitch friends. So yeah, there's, there's, for every craft, there's a community. I kind of like put them all together, all the communities together, because I love all my peeps. Yeah. And a lot of us are getting into puzzles, and it's just so much fun. I was actually, I was into puzzles before 
diamond painting. And that's how I discovered diamond painting. I think I was looking up puzzles um, and came across diamond painting. And that's how I got started. Something just fell over in the kitchen. I think it uh, it's probably a cat involved. I don't know. What do you guys think? <laughs> I think there's far too much white here. Oh my word. This, I think it's going to be fun. I really do. I think it's going to be a challenge and I'm up for the challenge. I'll see if my sister wants to work on it. If she wants to work on it, I'll just pick up the board, put it on the dining room table and she can work on it. So anyway, I will be live on Sunday at 11 a.m. And we'll just talk about, you know, everything chit chat. Please join me. And today, please don't forget to hit that like button. He is always ever so grateful when you acknowledge him. The like button is, yes. Um, I don't I don't talk about him enough, do I? Please consider subscribing and sharing this video with a friend if you think they would enjoy, you know, having something to listen to while they craft or puzzle or whatever it is they're doing. And don't forget the notification bell or you because you don't want to miss a single episode of my videos where I dance and puzzle and crochet. And, yeah, I'm going. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been a great week. I will see you on Sunday. If not, I will see you Monday morning in Crafting and Crime Daily.